Hi, I'm Adam Loretz from the Filmmakers Workshop and today I'm in sunny Corsham Court to do a review of the Canon XC10. I'm sure you're all aware of Canon's history. They gave us the 5D Mark II back in 2010. And with its large sensor, it gave us the film look. In fact, it popularised it and made it the one thing everybody had to have from their new camera. Canon followed this up with the Cinema EOS line cameras, the C100, 300 and 500, which developed that large sensor film look. But they had the I.O. that independent filmmakers and broadcasters absolutely love. And then we have the XC10, a completely different beast. It's got a one inch sensor and a relatively slow lens, f2.8 to 5.6, so a real departure from the film look. So what kind of filmmaking is the XC10 good for? I spent a couple of days with the unit to find out. Straight out of the box, the XC10 felt good in my hands. It's got a bit of weight to it, and if like me, you shoot a lot of handheld, that's not a bad thing. Going across the camera, looking at the controls, the hand grip was really ergonomic and twists, which means you could get some low angle shots. The buttons all seem to be in the right places and the zoom and focus rings are nicely machined. It's a very measured device with a manual zoom and fly-by-wire focus ring. Zoom and focus didn't take long to get used to and the on-screen distance controls work well and instill confidence when shooting. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Before grabbing my first few test shots, I decided to sit down and orientate myself with the menu system and see if I could assign some functions to the custom buttons on the back. My first experience shooting with the XC10 was a good one. It does make beautiful images, mostly helped by the fact that it's got a four times magnification button, which helps you get critical focus every time. Now, one of the many professional features of this camera is Canon's log mode. And this mode gives you a flat picture profile. And its base ISO is 500. And this means if you're in bright sunlight, you're gonna have to switch on the ND filter. And most probably turn that exposure up to F11 or higher in order to get proper exposure. So if you're intending to use this camera in bright sunlight, I do strongly suggest you get a very ND filter. Especially if you're gonna wanna try and shoot with the lens wide open at f2.8 and try and get a little shallow depth of field. Alongside C-Log mode, the Canon XC10 has another great professional feature, which is to record video in 8-bit 422 color. Now it does this in 4K mode to FreeFast 2 cards and does it at 200 and 300 megabits per second. Now that's awesome quality, but at a price. It also cranks out HD mode at 50, 35 and 25 megabits per second, all of which are 422 color to more economical SDHC and SDXC cards. Whilst I'm not a fan of auto mode, I did stick on the face recognition and it seemed to work really well. Audio is half the picture and recording audio into the XC10 was a breeze. Using a Beach Tech box, I got two sources of mono audio straight into the 3.5 millimeter jack. And monitoring via the headphone jack and the detailed meters on the back of the LCD was a cinch. I could turn automatic gain control off too, which is nice. For the most part, I found myself shooting in HD mode, mostly because recording at 300 megabits per second, this camera runs through a 32 gigabyte card in 13 minutes. In bright or controlled conditions, this camera gives a fantastic image, but I just wouldn't want to push it more than 1600 ISO. The camera also has a photo mode. It's rubbish. I just don't see the point of a photo mode that records 12 megapixel JPEGs. Over the past few days, I've really enjoyed using the XC10. It makes beautiful images. It's got good optical stabilization, a decent codec, face recognition, and reasonable enough IO. Shooting outside in bright sunlight, you really need to use the XC10's additional diopter eyepiece thingy. And it is a thingy. It's ugly as hell. And it clips onto the LCD with a great big clunky clip it's a real pain to get on and off. As such, 
I really felt this spoiled the overall user experience for me. It just doesn't fit in with my kind of corporate and fly on the wall shooting. In summary, I'm quite torn up about the XC10 because whilst I love the images that it can produce, I'm not really a fan of the usability based on having to use this big diopter. It's a total donkey. It's fair to say the XC10 isn't going to be for everyone. Although if you're an existing Canon user and you have other Canon cinema cameras and you want that log image, and maybe you've got some CFast 2 cards if you're shooting 4K, then possibly the XC10 could fit into your lineup. It's not terribly expensive and it does shoot some very nice images. I could certainly see it being used for some documentary work or news interviews. So that just about wraps it up here for this review of the Canon XC10, an interesting camera that I've enjoyed using for the most part. It's just not necessarily a camera that I would like to own. Just like to say a big thank you to Guy at Hire a Camera for loaning me this unit. And for everyone else, thanks for watching and do remember to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And I will see you next time on the Filmmakers Workshop. I'm Adam Loretz. Goodbye.